Tonight we have four outstanding speakers who are experts on periprosthetic joint infection. Our first author, Dr. Tad Mabry, is an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and a consultant in adult reconstruction at the Mayo Clinic. He will present his paper, Morbid Obesity, a Significant Risk Factor for Failure of Two-Stage Revision Total Knee Arthroplasty for Infection, published in JBJS in September 2014. The second JBJS article, presented by Dr. Antonio Chen, is entitled Positive Culture During Reimplantation Increases the Risk of Subsequent Failure in Two-Stage Exchange Arthroplasty. It was published in the August 3, 2016 issue of JBJS. Dr. Chen is the Associate Director of Research at the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia and Assistant Professor at Thomas Jefferson University and the Director of Medical Education Curriculum for Musculoskeletal Studies at the Sidney Kimmel Medical College. Each author presentation will be followed by expert commentary. Dr. Mabry's paper will be commented on by Dr. Daniel Berry, who is the L.Z. Gunn Professor of Orthopedic Surgery and past chairman of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at the Mayo Clinic. Dr. Chen's presentation will be discussed by Dr. Andrew Freiberg, who is the Chief of Adult Reconstruction Surgery and Interim Department Chair in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital. Dr. Freiberg is also an Associate Professor at Harvard Medical School. We will save the last 15 minutes for questions from the audience. The questions, however, can be sent in at any point during the presentation. Dr. Swinkowski will help me identify the most relevant questions, and I will direct them toward one or all of the speakers. Now let's begin with Tad Mabry. Tad? Dr. Clark, thank you very much for that introduction, and thank you for this opportunity to present our work. I think all of us are well aware that obesity is a major public health concern with a direct impact on the knee. It is associated with an increased risk of knee osteoarthritis, a lower age at the time of total knee arthroplasty, and an increased risk of total knee arthroplasty failure. I'd like to present to you a fairly common scenario that many of us will see in clinic. We might see a 59-year-old patient with a sedentary job. They might have some medical comorbidities such as type 2 diabetes mellitus, and they tell you that because of knee pain, they really cannot walk. One look at their x-ray shows you that non-operative treatment has come and gone, and their BMI registers a bit high at 46. And you might counsel that patient about obesity and the increased risk of septic failure after total knee arthroplasty. This slide shows three such studies. In the first study, they looked at over 1,800 total knee patients and differentiated patients based on a BMI greater than 35 versus less than or equal to 35 and noted a 6.7 times risk of infection in the high BMI group. The second study looked at a mixed population of patients following primary hip and knee replacement, almost 8,500 joints, and when they differentiated patients based on a BMI greater or less than 40, there was a three times risk of infection, but when they used a BMI of 50, they noted that to jump up to about 18 times the risk. The third study again looked at a mixed population of hip and knee patients greater than 7,000 and again noted a 10 times higher risk of prosthetic joint infection when the BMI was greater than or equal to 40 versus less than 30. And finally, in a soon-to-be-published study by my colleague, Dr. Barry, they looked at BMI in a more elegant way as a continuous variable and found that infection risk after total knee arthroplasty rises pretty sharply beyond a BMI of 35. But even after all of that counseling, from the patient's perspective, they might tell you, Doc, I'll take my chances. If I get infected, 
I know that you can fix me. And that leads us to this clinical question, how successful are we at two-stage revision total knee arthroplasty for septic failure in morbidly obese patients? To try to answer that question,